welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. A reminder, if you've not already, uh, you can nominate us in the Podcast Awards, podcastawards.com. I'm up in the best male-hosted uh, podcast category, as well as the best art uh, podcast category. Uh, in this round, there's only w- you only nominate once, but you do have until July the 31st to do so. Well, let's go ahead and get into this week's episode of Philo Vance, the original air date, June 21st, 1950, and the title is The Peacock Murder Case. Hello. Uh, Are you Philo Vance? Yes, I am. Rather exhausted, Vance. Vance. You see, I've been working on my office all night. Oh, really? Your secretary? Neither of my secretaries is in yet. They have a more lenient employer than I. You're easier on them than you are on yourself, don't you mean? Something like that. Now, what can I do for you? I don't know yet. I'm just looking around. Oh, shopping? Mm-hmm. For Bob. Got any? Right at the moment, I don't have anything except a definite desire to sleep. Perhaps at some other time, this vague type of conversation might be very interesting, but not now, no. Will you forgive me? For that? Yes. Vance, you're a private investigator, aren't you? Well, that's the generally accepted impression. Why? Well, right now, you're working for a man named David Peacock. He's hired you to protect him and a strong box he keeps in his safe. Get him on the phone now and tell him you've resigned from the case. So early in the morning, I never disturb my clients at this hour. Sorry. I wouldn't call him even if I knew David Peacock or what you were talking about. Nice try, Vance, but it won't work. I have a friend outside I want you to meet. Please don't move. Interesting morning. An attractive young lady, a gun, and a friend. This isn't anything you can talk your way out of, Vance. Hold everything. Junior? Yeah? Come on in here. Yeah, I'm coming. Well, here I am, eh? <laughs> that's Philo Vance, Junior. Oh, that's Vance, huh? Nice-looking fella, hey? Huh? Hey? A curious fellow at the moment. This is a rather unusual visit, I might say. Oh, you don't know how unusual. Vance, this David Peacock you're working for, are you going to resign as I asked you to? I don't think so. Make up his mind for him, Junior. And remember, Vance, I'm holding this gun. How could I forget either you or it? Don't you know you should be quiet, hey, Vance, hey? No, I don't, as long as you ask. And if I'm not the... What? Maybe that'll teach you, hey? And in case that isn't enough, maybe this will... No! <laughs> well, I don't like your method of instruction, my friend. It's time I took a hand in this education course. You wouldn't put that gun down for a moment, miss. Oh, now, Vance. Well, no harm in asking. Well, it's your gun or Junior's fist. You'll have to admit that isn't much of a selection. Mm, You get one break. You can make your choice this time. But if you don't quit working for David Peacock, remember, this is just a sample. My dear young lady, whoever you are doesn't matter, but this does. I told you before, I don't even know David Peacock. But this afternoon, I'm going to see him and apply for the job you're so sure I already have. Strange thing, you're coming to see me this afternoon, Mr. Vance. Very strange. Why, Mr. Peacock? What's strange about it? Only yesterday I was considering engaging your services to protect me. I already have a bodyguard, a private detective named Moran, Jimmy Moran. Do you know him? No, can't say that I do. He can't be a licensed operator or I'd have heard of him. He's not from the city, and he's very rough and not very smart. 
That's why I thought I might call you. I see. Perhaps you'd be good enough to tell me why you think you need protection, Mr. Peacock. And why you don't call in the police. Why do I think I need protection? Yes. I'll tell you why, Vance. In this house, there's a strong box in my safe. The safe has an unusual combination, and I've been assured that it's burglar-proof. I'm the only one that knows the combination. I'm listening. The safe is in a room for which I alone have the key. Yes, and I've been informed also that the room is burglar-proof. Uh, that's quite necessary, you see, because my entire fortune is in that safe. And you wanted to hire me to protect you and it, right? Well, I was considering it, as I told you. I haven't quite made up my mind. Though how you happen to come down to see me this afternoon is more than I can understand. I could explain that, but I'd rather not. Mr. Peacock, who gets all your money when you pass on? Well, my niece, a very charming, well-bred young lady. Where do you meet her, Mr. Vance? You like her. Does she live here with you? No, but she visits me every day. Wonderful girl, wonderful. Completely self-reliant. And she can protect herself, too. Carries her own gun and knows how to use it. <laughs> or, too, she practices enough on the range out and back. A social young lady who carries a gun. She does sound like someone I want to meet. You probably will someday. Vance, I, I'm sorry you had this visit for nothing. For the time being, I think I'll stick with my present bodyguard. Just as you say. Although I did have a personal reason for coming here. Oh? Uncle David! Uncle David, where are you? Well, that's my niece now. In the library, Polly. Come in here. Come on the way. Well, it looks as though I will get to meet your niece, doesn't it, Mr. Peacock? It most certainly does, and you'll find her charming, believe me. Uncle David, I... Oh. Well, that's all right, Polly. Come in. Polly, I'd like to present the very distinguished private investigator, Philo Vance. Introductions aren't necessary, Mr. Peacock. I've met your niece in my office early this morning. <laughs> Look, hey, do you have to stare out the window? Can't you stare at something in this room, eh, just for a change? Shut up, Junior, I'm thinking. Well, that's why you're nervous. If you'd stop thinking, you wouldn't be nervous. That's why I'm never nervous, eh? <laughs> Philo Vance followed me here from my uncle's house, Junior. I know he did. So what if he did? So I'll give him another treatment like I gave him this morning in his office. Then we keep him here... That means your uncle is alone with that guy Jimmy Moran we planted in his house. <laughs> That's what we want, ain't it, hey? Yes, sure it is. But I don't like it. With Vance in the picture, it changes things too much. Maybe we could buy him off. Yeah, a guy you can't scare off, you can't buy you off. You don't know how true that is, Junior. Oh, so you came back for a second lesson, huh, Vance? Hey? Okay, I'll give you a little homework this time. This time, you learn something. <laughs> This time, I'm paying up the assignments. Well, young lady, that takes care of your friend, Junior. He and I are even. But how about you and me? Do you like talking now? Not especially. There's one thing you ought not mind telling me. What is it? I know you always carry a gun. How is it you didn't use it just now when I was evening up matters with Junior? You are on his side, aren't you? I'm not on anybody's side, Vance. All I want is to be on the winning side. Remember that. It might explain a lot to you later on. Step back, Mr. Moran, if you please. Okay, Mr. Peacock. I'm back. Go on, open the door. I won't look. You can look if you like. It's a sheet metal door. Absolutely burglar-proof, they tell me. No harm can come in your watching me open the door. But the safe I can't watch, huh? Well, you know better. I have a fortune in money and jewels in this box I'm carrying. I just made sure everything is intact. Now I'll return it to the safe. Come with me, please. I'm a real bodyguard. When I'm on duty, where you go, I go. That's why you're being paid, young man. Here's my wall safe. Please hold this box while I open it. Go ahead. Turn your back, please. Okay. I'm turned... I trust you, you understand, but no one knows this combination but me, and I'd prefer that situation to stay just as it is. What was that? Sounded like a shot. Shall I go see? No, no, no. Please stay where you are. You may turn around now and hand me the box. Okay. Here you are. Thank you. There. A few spins of the dial... There we are. 
Well, Mr. Moran, your work is practically over for the day. Nobody can get in the safe. Nobody can even get in this room after I close and lock the door. So that's that. <laughs> your job isn't very difficult, is it, Mr. Moran? No, Mr. Peacock. That's what you think. <laughs> Well, Vance, is there anything else you'd like? I don't think so, Miss Deering, unless you can induce Mr. Markham to invite me in on an interesting murder case this morning. You know, I applied for a job yesterday afternoon that was turned down by Mr. Peacock. All I know is he showed bad judgment. <laughs> now you want me to use my influence with the district attorney and get him to invite you in on a murder. Mm -hmm. Why don't you commit one, Vance? What? I guarantee you do it so cleverly that even you couldn't solve it. <laughs> hmm, Vance against Vance. Sounds interesting. Whom would you bet on? Vance. Ellen, dear, you're wonderful. <laughs> Take the laugh out of your voice and those words would sound wonderful. <laughs> Vance, I found the cutest restaurant. Could we have dinner there tonight? If you like. I'm wearing my agreeable disposition this morning. <laughs> I'll get it, Ellen. Which phone is it? 1561. Got it. Hello. Vance Markham. Well, my favorite district attorney. Ellen and I were just talking about you. <laughs> No matter what you said, it isn't true. Well, we were saying some nice things. Oh. In that case, I reserve the right to change my testimony. <laughs> Motion granted. <laughs> uh, what's up, Markham? A murder? None that I know of. Oh. Sorry to disappoint you, my friend. This is strictly a social call. I'm Hello. surprised, but not disappointed. <laughs> well, it's nice of you to say that, but... In a minute, Ellen. Oh, Markham, uh, let me call you back, will you please? I have another call. By all means. Bye, Vance. Goodbye. On 1562, Vance. Right. Lilo Vance speaking. Vance, this is David Peacock. I told you yesterday I didn't need you, but I do very badly. What's the trouble, Mr. Peacock? Well, a minute ago, I went in the room where I have my wall safe. I opened it, and everything is gone, Vance. You understand? Everything is gone. That was the safe that couldn't be opened? Well, somebody opened it. Somebody must have worked out the combination. I've told it to no one, and the safe wasn't forced. Vance, you've got to come right out. You've got to go to work for me. I've got to get my money back. Where's that private detective that worked for you, that Jimmy Moran? Well, he's still in the house. I called you even before I called the police. Better call the police, Mr. Peacock. I'll leave now, and I'll be out at your place in half an hour. <laughs> Oh, it's you, Van. Good afternoon. Nice to see you without your friend Junior around. Is your uncle in his study? He's expecting me. I suppose that's where he is. You don't learn very easily, do you, Van? I'm a very apt student when I'm learning the right things. You needn't bother to come with me. I know the way. I was here yesterday. Mm, I remember. Very well. Thank you. You know, of course, that your uncle's safe has been robbed. What? That's what I was told on the phone. Everything is missing. He kept his whole fortune in the safe. I'm going in to see him with you. It's all right with me. <laughs> this is the study, I believe. Yes, come on in. <gasps> Uncle David! Don't touch anything. Stay right here in the doorway. I'll take a look at the body. Beth, tell me. Is he dead? Hmm. Very dead. Bullet passed right through his throat and is embedded in the woodwork of the wall. Oh. The police are on the way here, I imagine. I asked your uncle to send for them. But now I'm going to send for the district attorney. This is District Attorney Markham. The Peacock murder case opened when Philo Vance found the body of David Peacock. Immediately after Peacock had reported his burglar-proof safe had been opened and the strong box inside rifled. Vance has already met the dead man's niece, Polly, and her friend, Junior, and told me that Polly always carried a gun. From the shooting range at the rear of the Peacock house, we took a bullet that had been fired from her gun and have sent it to headquarters to be compared with the murder bullet. Vance and I are in the murder room examining the bullet hole. Right? Markham, who removed the bullet from this wall? Sergeant Heath. Hmm. Heath's very careful and very thorough. He wouldn't have made this scratch on the wood next to the bullet hole. Would that be important, a little thing like that? In covering up a crime, a murderer generally knows enough to wipe out the big clues, Markham. Well, that may be headquarters. I've been waiting for a report on the bullets I sent them. I'll answer that. 
Markham speaking. A Walters Police Laboratory, Mr. Markham. Oh, yes. Just want to let you know the bullet we took out of the wall and the bullet you told us came from the gun belonging to Peacock's niece were both fired from the same pistol. Thanks, Walters. Bye. You hear that, Vance? Yes, I did. I'm glad I told you about the shooting range the girl used. Of course, you're holding her, Markham. Of course. Good. Before we go any further on this case, I want to pay a visit to a friend of hers, a strange young man named Junior. <laughs> Oh, it's you, eh? Moran the private dick. Eh? What do you want here? Sit down, Junior, sit down. I got an idea you and I are being set-ups for a gal, both of us being played for patsies. Peacock was murdered, you know that. Yeah, yeah, I heard. The stuff was missing out of his safe. Did you take it? No. No, and I didn't knock him off either. Neither did I. I got an idea your friend Polly cut this cute caper herself. What? Now she rubbed him out and it's going to make it look like I killed him. Or you did. You get that? Maybe you did kill the old guy, hey? How stupid can you get? The finger would be on me right away, wouldn't it? Well... Who was in the house? Well, how... Me. Who's got a record if they go back far enough? Well, I... Me. Look, Junior, I was working for that dame and so were you. So we're all in this together. Only I'm not going to be tagged with a bum murder rap, you get that? Uh, don't bother me. I'm thinking, hey... That ain't good. It, it makes me nervous. It makes me so nervous. You know what I'm going to do, hey? Even if you had a mind, I couldn't read it. What are you going to do? I'm going to give you one minute to scram out of this joint of mine. And if you ain't out in here by then, I'm going to toss you out on your ear. And the way I feel about you, I hope you make me do it. Do you hear, hey? <laughs> That's his car right ahead of us, Vance. He's the private detective Moran, eh, Markham? Yes. Something tells me I'm glad we followed him after he left Junior's. I think I'll get more out of him than I would from Junior anyhow. Keep following him, please. Vance, I don't follow you. We know Polly must be the murderer. The murder bullet, the bullet we took out of the wall, came from her gun. And she's certain the gun was never out of her sight. Markham, suppose the murderer got a bullet from the target range just as you did. Then, after he killed Mr. Peacock with his own gun, he extracted the real murder bullet from the woodwork and inserted one he knew would be traced to the niece. Yeah. That would account for the scratch on the woodwork next to the bullet, wouldn't it? Of course. His knife might have slipped while removing his own bullet. Yes. Now that I've told you my theory, I think it's time I talked to our friend Moran. Speed up a bit, Markham. Right. Pull up alongside of Moran. Let me transfer to his car, and then, if you will, you can do me a favor. You know I will. What is it? Find that junior whom Moran was visiting. Pick him up and bring him to the Peacock house. I'll phone you there, and please be sure the niece is there, too. Vance, you just practically exonerated her with the bullet theory. Not quite. She's a very clever young lady, Markham. I might be thinking just exactly the way she wants me to think. Have her there, will you? I'm a little confused, but I'll do it your way. Thanks, and now that we're practically alongside Mr. Moran, signal to him, will you please? Right. He isn't paying any attention. He's speeding up. So I see. Keep with him. Get ahead if you can and force him to the curb. I'll try this car's a newer model than his. I ought to be able to do it. Now, Markham, cut your wheel over now. Right. There, that did it. Hey, what's the idea? You two guys crazy or something? You keep going as soon as I get out, Markham, which will be right now. I'll call you later. Good enough. Five ants. Hey, what's the idea of cutting me off? You looking for trouble, Mac? I got a lot of it laying around ready to let loose. I'm sorry we had to cut you off, but you wouldn't stop when we signaled. Why should I stop? Who are you to signal me? Hey, wait a minute. I know you. You're Philo Vance. That's right. And you're Jimmy Moran. You're supposed to be a private detective, they tell me. Go ahead, Vance. I know all about you. Get cute. Get real cute so I know what you. I'll try. Look, Mr. Moran, somebody apparently opened the combination on Mr. Peacock's safe. That same somebody first found a way to get past the sheet metal door of the room. And what's most important, somebody killed Mr. Peacock. Well? Who could have opened that door and that safe? Anybody with talent and fingers could have gotten in the door and the safe van. Such as? I wouldn't know. Well, that's too bad. Now I'll have to find out for myself. That's too bad, too. Now, is it all right if I drive where I want to go and drop you off? Of course. But do me one favor, will you? Meet me at the Peacock house in two hours. Two friends of yours will be there, and if they aren't glad to see you, I assure you, I will be. Well, go ahead. Go ahead and arrest me. You're 
the district attorney. Yes. You know my gun killed my uncle. You know I'm supposed to inherit from him, so arrest me. Go on. But see if you can prove why or how I'd open a steel door and a safe and grab everything in that safe, especially when the stuff would be mine anyhow. You have a point there, and it's one of the reasons you're not being arrested yet. You might be interested in knowing that we've picked up a man known as Junior. Well, what about And in another room in this house, we're holding a private detective named Jimmy Moran. Well, what's next? Well, right now, we're waiting for Philo Vance. He wanted all three of you here when he arrived. Which is right now. Good evening. What's good about it? Hello, Vance. That remains to be seen. Where is Mr. Moran being held, Markham? In the den. The room where the safe is located. The door unlocked? It is now. The key's in the door, though. I had the police expert who opened it leave it there. Good. Well, Markham, I have one phone call to make, and then I can promise you a break in this case. I think I can tell you who killed Peacock as soon as I find out how a safe that couldn't be opened was opened. It couldn't be opened, Mr. Vance, not without the combination. We guaranteed that safe when we made it. Of course, if an acetylene torch was used, that would be different. No torch was used. The safe is in perfect condition. Could somebody figure out the combination? It isn't very likely. I'm sorry, I should have known better. The combination contained four numbers, and it would take days, months maybe, to get the right figures in the right order by trial and error. Tell me one other thing, if you will, sir. Anything I can. Did you make the safety box, the one that fitted into the safe? It's about 16 inches long, about 3 inches high. It's possible we did. Well, I wish you'd check, and if you did make it, and you sold one recently, I'd like to know whom you sold it to. I'll hold the wire. Okay, Vance, I'm here like he asked. Now give me the sales talk and keep it clean. What's this all about? I need help. I just made a phone call, and I know who killed Mr. Peacock and who robbed the safe in this room. You've got to help me prove it. I do, huh? Well, right now, all I hear is words. I need the music to go with them. Moran, listen. Knowing who the murderer is puts my life in danger. If I don't have a chance to prove my case, I want you to remember this. Hey, what was that? Sounded like somebody locked the door. Yeah? Well, I'll soon find out. We're locked in here, Vance. Hey, what's going on? Hey, open this door. Open it up. I'm afraid nobody can hear us except the person who locked the door, and I'm quite certain that individual has no intention of opening it. Okay, but well, what's a gimmick? Why lock us in? <coughs> Vance, it- it's gas. Yes. <coughs> Somebody's feeding it through the keyhole. <coughs> That's your answer, Moran. Get- stuff this paper in the keyhole, yeah. quickly. We're trapped if we don't keep that gas out. Give me the paper. <coughs> It's no good. It's it's coming in now through the bottom of the door. That stuff will burn our insides out, Vance. This is a rather (coughs) sorry way (coughs) for me to wind up a case. Who cares about a case? I care about getting out of here. Where'd you get that paper you gave me? From the desk over here. Any more there? Any papers clipped together? Look fast. Yeah, (coughs) I hear a few. We will never shut out the gas with these. I don't want the paper. Give me the paper clip. Yeah. Give me it fast. Here you are. Okay. (coughs) Gotta straighten out this clip and fit it into the lock. If we get a break, maybe I can get us both out of here, Vance. I certainly hope we get that break. Now, if this clip doesn't snap, we've got a chance. I think I can catch the lock and <coughs> turn it. I think I'm getting it. There. Good. I, I did it. Vance, I saved our lives. What have you got to say to that? I'll tell you in a minute. M- Markham! Markham! Yes? Coming. Well, Vance... What do you mean, well, Vance? Somebody just tried to kill Vance and me, and I saved our lives, didn't I? Well, didn't I, Vance? That's what you imagined you did. Actually, you really saved nothing but my reputation, Mr. Moran. Markham, you can arrest Jimmy Moran for the murder of David Peacock. Sorry I kept you waiting. How late am I? Not very, Ellen. It's only a few minutes past eight o'clock. Sorry. I had a lot of trouble with this hat. Just couldn't get it to sit right. Oh, well, its posture is perfect now. Good. (laughs) Now let's sit down and we'll order. All right. And you can tell me all about the Peacock murder case. Well, I told you over the phone that Jimmy Moran, the self-appointed private detective, was the murderer. He's confessed and we've recovered the money. You never told me how you knew it was Moran. Well, let's start from the beginning. 
Peacock phoned me to say his safe had been robbed, yes. but that he hadn't given the combination to anyone. And you knew that nobody could open the safe without the combination. Nobody did. Peacock opened the safe himself earlier today. Moran was carrying the deposit box. Peacock made him turn around so he wouldn't see the combination. Then while his back was to Peacock, Moran slipped the real deposit box into his trouser leg and handed Peacock a duplicate he had ordered. Peacock put that one in the safe. And found out later that it was empty. And called me to report it. Then he must have realized what happened, that Moran must have distracted him momentarily and switched boxes on him. He accused Moran, and Moran shot him. Wait just a second. Why did Moran switch boxes? Didn't he try to open the safe? When he first started to work for Mr. Peacock, he undoubtedly tried, but couldn't get anywhere with the combination. I see. In order to get into the room to work on it, though, he had to get past a sheet metal door. How did he do that? Ellen, that door was my best friend. When I got Moran to open it when he thought we were in danger from the gas which Markham planted... He showed me he could open the door without a key. Tell me just one more thing and then we'll eat. Why did Polly and her friend Junior try to keep you off the case in the very beginning? They had the whole deal set up with Moran as an accomplice. Murder wasn't included, however. It's true that Polly would inherit when her uncle died, but she didn't want to wait that long. So she hired Moran, an expert around safes, to steal the money. But he double-crossed her. And then when Moran killed Peacock, he planted the bullet from her gun in the woodwork after removing his own bullet. That's right. But I figured that out at the beginning. Okay, so let's stop worrying about the beginning and start to eat. <laughs> After all, this is the end of the Peacock murder case. Welcome back. The opening scene to this uh, episode was interesting to me. Because you had Philo Vance being offered money not to take a case and then being beat up for uh, failing to comply. Which seemed a bit hard-boiled. In fact, I have heard and read and seen this sort of scenario. Now, Philo Vance doesn't typically fall into the hit on the head school of detection. In fact, uh, Philo Vance, you know, as originally written in the novels, was very much the gentleman detective sort, who just goes around, pontificates, and solves puzzles. But these shows are so often shaped by their era. And we've talked about how Johnny Dollar... Uh, took on some more uh, police-involved plots, more uh, procedural sort of cases, as Dragnet was at the peak of its popularity. But uh, the hard-boiled detective shows also had their influence, because in June of 1949, Dragnet was just a summer replacement program, and the big thing was and had been for at least a couple years now the hard-boiled private eye. And so, yeah, the, those sort of stories, uh, I think, influenced that scene. And even though it didn't go, you know, full-fledged that direction, it's an influence. And I think you'll find that pretty much in any era, regardless of the work or character being adapted and where they came from, the way that their story is 
told uh, gets influenced by what is the big thing at the moment. Now it is time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Maggie, Patreon supporter since September 2016, currently supporting us at the Detective Sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Well, that will do it for today. If you are enjoying this podcast on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell. All that great stuff that helps more people find the channel. We'll be back next Thursday with another episode of Philo Vance, but coming up tomorrow, listen for yours truly, Johnny Dollar, where... I'm so sorry about the delay. Nobody's worried about me. For me, I'm glad it happened. I had enough of the road. And I could use a good night's sleep. Well, I, I don't feel so bad then. The mechanic said the motor court in the next block is a nice place. Shall we go look at it? Why not? Here with me. Well. All right, come along then. Wait a minute. What, what's what Mr. Grell? Make it on the inside. I can't let them see me. <laughs> He wanted to run as the green coupe slowly came abreast of us, but he didn't. I expected gunfire, but none came. Only the beam of a flashlight that held briefly on Garrel and then snapped off. I spotted two men in the coupe as it rolled away from us. Then I turned with Bovey and the girl to see how Garrel would explain himself. Sorry. I thought it was somebody I knew. Somebody I didn't feel like talking to just now. <laughs> I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.